got my coffee. Oh yeah. All right. Welcome to the Digicast. What's I am up, your host. Everybody? What? I was saying hi. Oh saying hi yeah, to yeah. So Jacob is uh, is out this week. It's uh, just Nathaniel Bandy and I, Scott Lee, uh, and we're going to be talking about um, a couple things that happened this past week. We're going to be discussing, of course, a little bit more of the Nintendo Switch, and uh, we will get into your questions. So last week we we missed out on answering questions and. I apologize for that, but we will get into it this week. Uh, for those who are just coming on to the channel and listening to the show, you can submit questions at ask.fm slash digicades. Uh, Nathaniel, what is going on? What what have you been up to? Well, I have been working as usual. I Something cool did happen today. I ordered uh, a brand new capture card. Um, and I got it today. I haven't tested it yet, but it's called the Elgato Game Capture HD 60S. Have you ever heard of that one? No, but it sounds fancy. Well, what's cool about this one is, see, I, I already have a capture card. Um, but the problem is when you're trying to stream with my old capture card, there's lag on the picture itself. So my gameplay is about a second behind my audio or my face cam, and it's hard to fix that. Um, on a stream, but now this new capture card, there's no latency at all, no lag. So I will be able to stream not only in higher quality, but there will be no lag with my face cam audio and gameplay, and things are going to look a lot crisper, and I'm really excited to start using it. So it is just a PC capture card? Yep. Yeah, well, it'll work with uh, PC, iPad, iPhone. I have the adapter for that. It'll work with all my consoles. So I'm I'm really excited to start using it. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, I know that Jacob usually asks this, but have you been playing anything uh, different this past week? I have been playing Brawl like all day today, preparing for a, another video. Uh, that's okay, about it, okay. though. What What about you? Uh, so right now people are looking at gameplay of Megatect which is a right now it's it's early access it's on PC that that you're watching but I was really surprised at uh how good this game was so there's a guy on Twitter that I've talked with a tiny bit his name is Matt Goals and he's with uh his his company name I think is Time Drop Studios and um he's the sole developer of this thing it's it's an indie game but it looks it looks pretty gorgeous I think like for so for like for the first part of the video People are going to be seeing like kind of some lower quality uh, gameplay footage. And then later on, I, I mess with the the settings and I kind of uh, amp it up. And it, it's it's capable of doing quite a bit graphically. I was really surprised. It's got like really nice shadows, reflections, all kinds of stuff. Um, so, yeah, it is. So what it is, is it's basically like a sandbox game. It's kind of like a uh, like a Minecraft, but um with with some differences it's not 100 percent blocky so like there's a whole lot of like preset assets and there's a whole lot of stuff you can do but um i was also weirded out at the fact that like it's an alpha because as you watch the footage there's gonna there's gonna be like a lot that this, that's going on um so you can you can set things up so that you can have like combat or you can even kind of like build out your own like games or like sports type things inside this environment or you can just like construct stuff so it's it's kind of wild and, and nuts and uh i was really impressed with it so yeah. um i did that for like an hour earlier today yeah that sounds pretty cool so i wanted to talk about this article that uh what what is the date on this well apparently apparently this this just came out but it's from finder.com.au and it's taking a look at data over the past couple generations. And it's saying the headline is 128 million console gamers are set to leave the market. And the summary of this is that console gaming, according to the sales numbers so far for this current eighth gen, console gaming is dying. And it's not just the Wii U, like, Everything across the board overall is doing more poorly than it did 
the previous generation. And it, things are on the decline. And, it, and this article is saying that the, the decline is normal uh, for like every console lifespan. But the big difference with this is, is that it's happening way sooner and, and much more sharply than it has in the past. So there's been some discussion around this. Some people think that people are jetting off to, to mobile gaming or maybe people are just catching up on Netflix or or maybe they're fleeing off to to PC gaming. Uh, we don't know. But um but it's kind of scary and the the thought that like um I, I mean Maybe it could just be casual gamers that are like running off to, uh, to to mobile games or something. I I suppose that would not be so terrible, but it's kind of a scary thought to me. I do think that maybe a part of what's to blame is actually YouTube, and it's not so much just you know people being very pessimistic all the time about like every game ever. It's not even just that. It's the fact that. More and more people like to watch others play video games, which is in one way good for sales because it might intrigue someone that's watching to buy the game themselves. But other people can't afford to play a certain game or they don't want to spend the money on a certain game. So they'll just watch someone else play it. So that could be a factor. And uh, like you said, it could just be people are moving to mobile. People are moving to PC because they're realizing that you know, they care more about the graphics and consoles aren't providing the the top graphics, so they're moving to PC. So I think it's a large number of things. And I guess to transition to the Switch, that's one thing that's going to be really interesting when we see the Switch hit the market because the Switch right. is kind of like a console, a handheld, and a little bit like a mobile device because it looks like a tablet if you don't have the Joy-Cons uh, on the side of the tablet piece. And it's going to be interesting to see if this thing really takes off because it's kind of hitting a little bit of every different type of gaming market kind of mobile kind of console and kind of handheld yeah it's definitely a bizarre uh like when i really when i think about it it's just it it's a clash of so many different things but um i personally think that the switch when it comes down to it is just a handheld but it's like yeah. okay if if consoles as a whole are on on the decline and there and in this chart here um this is looking at worldwide console and handheld sales by year and it shows the rise and fall of the DS and the the blip of the Vita um if handhelds are, are yeah if if handhelds are are like plunging as well then that doesn't bode well right no, not necessarily, but at the same time, like the Switch isn't like it's it's brand new. It's like a brand new hybrid of a right. gaming console. It it you can classify it as a handheld primarily, but it does more. It's also uh just a normal um console. Um like you know, you can hook it up to the dock, play on the big TV, like it's it's multiple things. And I don't think this is the last time we're going to see a hybrid console. I think Sony and Microsoft are going to move in the same sort of direction, regardless if they have tablet consoles or, or phone consoles or something like that. I can see this kind of thing being much more popular in the next five years as technology gets uh, more and more powerful and smaller and smaller. This guy, George, in the comments, he says, it's not really a question, but an opinion. I am finding fewer games that are actually fun to play anymore. I miss the Dead Space games, the older Need for Speed series, and games like Split Second. I also wish they would include more side-scrolling space shooters like R-Type or Gradius. Basically, if the lineup of good AAA games that I like to play continues to shrink, I will not buy a PS5. I don't know why he mentions PS5, but do you do you think that like the the quality of the games has been declining because in, in we we talked about this uh i think toward the end of the year when for, for one of the digicasts we did back in december but we were like thinking back on 2016 and we were like you know 2016 didn't have a lot it had a mm. it had a, a few good things we we pointed out paper mario color splash and doom but do you feel that there's been a decline like for the past year or two I think there's been a decline in innovation and creativity the past couple of years. I mean, now that I kind of think about it, 
video game, AAA games especially, are starting to become like Hollywood movies. They're going to find yeah. something that works, going to melt the hell out of it until it's gone, and just repeat that process over and over. And I think people are getting really fatigued from that, more so than Hollywood movies, because games come out at a much faster rate than movies do. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, like... <sighs> It, 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 when you have when you have games that you spend over 50 or 100 million dollars on you you can't afford to make a single mistake and you're only going to be able to do that for so long so so what happens when uh they they run out of the ability to do that and to retread the same ground probably what we're going to see right now which is that um i don't know maybe maybe we're looking at the beginnings of a crash here I hope not. Uh, well, people have been be... saying that for years, though. I mean, I do True. think a crash is coming, but I have no idea when that's going to be. Well, I mean, do do you think that consoles have a, a an endless future, or do you think that they are coming to an end? I honestly think they're not really going to die. They're just going to kind of transform into something else, kind of like what the Wii U is doing with the Switch. It's it's still technically a console. It's just transforming into a different type of console. Because people have been saying that like consoles are going to die for a long time. And just the same way that they say that like there's going to be a market crash coming. People have always repeated mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to believe that because I've been hearing that since, I don't even know, like 2012. People have been saying, oh, the crash is coming. It's going to happen. It still hasn't happened yet. So I'm not going to believe it until it actually ends up happening. So another thing I tried to do this past week, um, so I, I was I was looking at the Switch launch lineup, and I was planning to pre-order Zelda and uh, and maybe Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Oh, I want to talk about that real quick too. So I was trying to look up some additional information about the fact that Isaac Afterbirth Plus, uh, which is a launch title for Switch. I was wanting to look that up on Nintendo's website, and it is indeed a launch title. I was able to confirm it's a launch title, but Nintendo doesn't list it as a launch title for some reason. Um, it's created by uh, one of the the guys and, and, and probably uh, maybe one or two additional artists. I'm not sure, um, but one of the main creators of it is, is uh, one of the guys behind Super Meat Boy, which is very well known. And um, and it's apparently going to be available as both eShop and retail. So it's not like uh, it's not like this is entirely obscure because they're going to put physical copies of it on store shelves and Nintendo has not listed it. And it doesn't it doesn't show up. It not only doesn't show up on their website, it doesn't show up in the that that image that they released of saying like, Here's like our our you know wider list of everything that we're planning for 2017, and obviously, even that like updated revised image they came out with is not everything. Um, at least the image that showed up on Twitter, it's not everything. There are there are additional games, but I found it really weird the fact that everyone is talking about how bare the launch lineup is, and they don't list this game. I would think every single game that's a launch title they would want to list. Mm -hmm. I, I think people, I mean, obviously, as it looks right now, it looks bare, but I don't think that's all that's going to be launching. I don't think that's all they're going to announce. Um, I think they're going to release a brand new Direct sometime next month, maybe a couple weeks before the Switch comes out. Um, I mean, I can see that happening. Like, they're just going to kind of show off the UI because that, that was leaked, and I really think they're going to show that off briefly as well as some of the indie games, like you're talking about Breath of Isaac. And of course, Shovel Knight, that's going to get a physical and a, um eShop release. So we'll probably get more, in shop, or more info on the eShop too. Right. But yeah, so I thought that was really weird. I noticed that earlier this week. And then I was also trying to uh, pre-order a Pro Controller. Um, and I was, I was shopping around for that. And I looked at Amazon and Best Buy, and GameStop, and a few other places, and uh, I noticed that it is nowhere to be found. And so I want to read from this Business Insider article here. The, the headline is, Best Way to Play Nintendo's New Game Console uh, Isn't Available for Sale Yet. 
<laughs> it talks about oh how the, the, the it talks about how the joy cons are are really terrible it, it, this is written by some guy named ben gilbert i don't know but he talks about how he hates the joy cons and he just wants a pro controller and um and so what does it say it says even when the two joy con are saddled into the grip thus forming the traditional-ish gamepad setup it's not a great gamepad it feels like a massive square with grips attached because it is nintendo has a far better better solution in its 70 dollar pro controller and he says unfortunately there are two main issues with the pro controller it costs a whopping 70 dollars a 10 dollar jump over how much microsoft and sony controllers cost number two it's not actually available for purchase just yet even though other Switch accessories are. And in fact, like from what I've seen, everything else is available. Uh, well, maybe not. <laughs> Admittedly, I didn't look to see if like that uh, $90 dock is available. But <laughs> who's going to buy that? <laughs> yeah, but like, but like everything else that I've, that I've looked up so far. Uh, so like, um, like all the colors of Joy-Cons, single and dual pack joy cons charger accessories carrying cases screen protectors all that stuff is available now uh for pre-order at least and i haven't seen the pro controller so have you checked in store have i checked what have you checked in store like actually gone uh, inside a store no i haven't have you i would check i would check there um actually a friend of mine said he was able to pre-order a switch because he actually went into a Walmart. He didn't order it online. So maybe you can get them there. I'm not sure, though. I haven't checked. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and, and this all goes back to like the the big fear, which is that they're going to have severe stocking issues. And this is one of those times when I really don't feel like they can afford to have stocking issues. Mm -mm. Yeah, not with their last or their potentially last console. Like their last try at a console. You're talking about uh, the NES Classic Edition, right? <laughs> oh, yep. Yes to Switch and that. Which uh, I, I don't remember the exact numbers for the NES Classic Edition, but I was looking it up and it was something like 208,000 units, which is like a pitiful number uh, for something that was a holiday, uh, uh, kind of a hot holiday product. It's or at least too it would bad, have been. It could have sold so much more if they had more of the damn thing stocked. It really could have, and the window for selling that is kind of gone with the switch on the horizon. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't, I don't care about. Well, for, of course, I never cared about an NES Classic Edition, but um, I did care about the controllers, and I don't care about the controllers now that the switch is like right around the corner. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, because the old stuff's not going to work with the switch. Yeah, so I immediately stopped caring. So, so what all what all have you pre-ordered so far, Nathaniel? I've just pre-ordered the Switch with the two gray Joy Cons and Breath of the Wild, and that's it. Okay, so I mean, I'm probably that's... just gonna get. I might get the other stuff in store as well, because uh, I'm sure all the other games will be available. But if they're not, then I'll just buy them digitally. What did you pre-order? So I just did the console so far, but I was uh -huh. I was about to do Breath of the Wild, and then I I got sidetracked on this whole Pro Controller thing. So, but uh, but I will do I will pre-order Breath of the Wild, of course, because who won't except for Jacob? <laughs> of course. Um, and uh, and what else am I going to do? Well, of course I'm going to have to do one to switch for fifty bucks, and I'm going to have to do Just Dance 2017. Oh, I, I, I didn't realize this. Did you know that Just Dance 2017, I think, is already available on Wii U? Is it really? I, I, I think have no so. Idea. <laughs> I think it's actually on Wii U. It's probably on the Wii as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, it's everywhere. It's Just Dance. But, you know, like, I was kind of surprised. I walked into Target earlier today and I was like, oh, I can get Just Dance 2017 for Wii U. <laughs> so now that I can get Just Dance on Wii U, why do I need a Switch? exactly <laughs> and that's going to be game of the year right there so you know like there's there's oh. nothing left to do at this point i know man it's gonna sell a thousand million switches i mean to be fair we do have one two switch coming and that's that game 50, is gonna sell like 10 trillion switches 50 dollars. it's gonna sell like hotcakes oh god i mean I mean, if it was sixty dollars, it would sell. But I mean, at fifty dollars, like that thing is gonna fly off the shelves. 
Oh, I know. Fly off the shelves. I will be donating copies of One Two Switch to people. <laughs> I'll just be, I'll just give people fifty dollars and make sure they buy that game because I know they're going to absolutely adore it. Of course, of <laughs> course. Um, yeah. So you know, no, but seriously, um, obviously, I will not be buying One Two Switch. I don't. I don't know of anyone who will. I have not. I have not. I spoken. actually am going to. Well, yeah, but you're you're going to because you're going to be making videos about how terrible you think it is, or or at the very mm-hmm. least, just like the problems with it. I, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm probably going to do a review and a triggered video. Probably do both. I don't think it'll take long. I could probably do both those videos in one day because I can imagine that game's very bare bones. For, actually, from what from what I have heard of people who have actually done the hands on with it, they have said that it's 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 fun like they haven't said that they're going to buy it of course but <laughs> the idea being that maybe it's not 100 percent terrible worth 50 dollars no way no but um from what i have heard it's it's not going to be absolutely awful but at the, it's also like not i don't know you know like i, I just with that the, the the longer we we lead up to launch the more I wonder about what is Nintendo thinking with with pushing that on people at 50 bucks. Like, I, I'm just, like, completely blown away by that. And everyone has been asking why it was not uh, bundled in with the console. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense at all. That is a game that is meant to be bundled with the Switch, and it's not. It doesn't make sense. I mean, sense. maybe... Yeah, maybe they intended to at one point. I, I have no idea. And then I was watching this uh, interview with, with Reggie from, uh, what was it? Um, GameSpot, I guess. And, like, he he had to address it. He had to address the fact that um, that nobody <laughs> nobody is interested in buying this thing. And I, I, like, I, I just, I haven't spoken with a single person who cares? Uh, I I I've I've even seen a lot of interest and like even positive reception to snipper clips, which I personally don't care about. But like a lot of people have said that like they think snipper clips is going to be a lot of fun. I haven't heard anyone who cares about one two switch. Not really. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know anyone. Just... Maybe like ten years ago, someone would have cared about that game, but. I I I just don't know, and I I, and it it seems so bizarre that they are like going after the like the 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 old like Wii Phantom with this. Uh, one thing I I don't think Nintendo realizes is that uh, people bought the Wii. I don't think people genuinely liked the Wii. I I, I could be wrong. I mean, I know some people who genuinely do. Th- those th- they exist. Uh. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm completely biased. I just I ha- I hated the Wii personally, so like I don't know. Like I feel like nobody yeah. liked that console. Yeah, I I kind of have to like it. Um, I do know a lot of my audience likes that console because it's what they grew up with. It was actually the first console that I bought with my own money. But looking back, it's definitely not my favorite Nintendo console. Um, the the problem is that it's just the Wii Remote and Nunchuck aren't real controllers. They're just they're kind of just just don't the like them. They're not the remotes. The remote and the dildo. They're not that great to use. <laughs> and the games that are on there, I just I don't love. I I like them. I like Brawl. I like Mario Kart Wii. I've heard a lot of good things about Xenoblade Chronicles. I heard good things about Donkey Kong Country Returns. Things like that. But none of them are like masterpieces. Right. None of them are just like must have hits. Aside from like the Mario Galaxy franchise. But yeah, that's my main issue with the Wii. Um, so yeah, I, I don't understand why one two switch is even a thing. I th- yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was supposed to be a pack in, and then they're like, okay, we're gonna have to drive up the cost of the console if it's a pack in, but we don't want to do that. So now we're just gonna have to sell it individually since we've already made the damn thing. Yeah, but if you're gonna if you're gonna sell it individually, why sell it for fifty bucks? Yeah, like it should be like twenty thirty dollars something like that. Like yeah, twenty twenty bucks, twenty dollar little party game. Yeah, I don't know. 
Um, and, and maybe there's a bunch of stuff from it we haven't seen that, that maybe it's, maybe it's super great and I'm just, I'm, I'm yeah, crapping I've on heard, it right now. I don't know. I've heard that there's over 20 mini games, but yeah. we don't really know anything about them. We saw that weird trailer in the presentation and like, we can't really watch gameplay because the, it's not about the gameplay. It's, you don't even look at the, the game itself. It's all about the joy cons. So it's really hard to analyze if the game itself is going to be good until we actually get our the one person that gets their hands on it and actually plays yeah. it, which will be the, me. The, the, else the is one person who will put their hands on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like the only person that's going to a- actively want to purchase it. I think you're going to be the only one who will actually. But any, anyway, actually, yeah, yeah well, you know what? Speaking of which, we should probably just move on and, and talk about something else because we're probably losing subscribers for every like second that I discuss one, two switch. So uh, let me ask you this question, Nathaniel, <laughs> uh, <laughs> aside from super Mario Odyssey, which uh, to, to flip to an opposite for a second here, everyone is excited about <laughs> super Mario Odyssey. Um, oh. But, a, but, a, but aside from that game, I want to ask you, what are you predicting or, or, or maybe what are you hoping for? That, that Nintendo is going to announce at E3 this year because I know I know that they have some some hidden things up their sleeve um, primarily because there is so little so far uh-huh mm, well I think we can all expect a big Pokemon title we'll probably get some sort of uh, remake or not a remake you know how Nint- uh, Nintendo or the Pokemon company will do like They'll make gold and silver, and then they'll do crystal, like the updated version of those two games. I think they're going to have something like that on the Switch. They're going to announce that at E3. I can see them announcing the new Smash Bros. Um, probably probably just be a port. Uh, maybe a new Metroid? I think that would be really cool, but I don't know if we're going to get that. Yeah, like Reggie apparently has hinted at the idea of... I either or or maybe both of Metroid and Mother Three, so um, he and, and didn't. I don't. He didn't really hint. Someone asked him about those two games, and he said, "Yeah, we'll see where we are next year." Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ask me in a year, and we'll see what has happened. The he'll probably say the next. He'll say the next thing next year, or the same thing next year. Well, I yeah, I want to be optimistic, and what I what I really hope for. If they're going to announce something for Metroid, oh, and another thing is, is I'm I'm expecting, and I'll talk about Metroid in a second, but I'm expecting them to announce something for F Zero because uh, of the presence of F Zero in Mario Kart Eight and Mario Kart mm-hmm. Eight Deluxe, um, and I feel like I don't know. It's maybe, about maybe, time we get a new F Zero. It is, yeah, it definitely is about time. But I'm also really interested to know what they would do with it because I think in Nintendo's case, they can't just do any, like, it can't just be another racing game this time. It has, Mm -hmm. there has to be something special about it. And and when I say there has to be something special about F-Zero, I mean something other than like it does something dumb with the Joy Cons. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I, I just I can see them doing a either a Mario Kart Wii kind of gyro, <laughs> or it'll be something yeah. like Splatoon, where you can aim where you're driving. You know, I'm sure they'll do that, and they'll also have the option to just use a, a joystick. But I yeah, mean, it's not it, really a substantial difference. Like, it's kind of a new thing, but it's not really. A new core gameplay mechanic right and they have to figure out ways of avoiding overlap with mario kart too because like mario kart is the big nintendo racing game and so if you're going to announce an f-zero you have to make f-zero new again somehow and that's really one of the interesting problems that that franchise kind of has because there's in, in, in like a lot of ways, and I, I would say this is probably true for stuff like Star Fox as well. There, there's only like a small number of directions that you can go with with F Zero because you have to somewhat rely on what you did in the past. And then when with going forward, um, 
you know, like we've talked about it here on, on the Digicast as well, but like Jacob has always said, like, we need like an open world F Zero game where you're you're running around as Cap- Captain Falcon and Falcon punching people. <laughs> or something. Yeah, I, I think that will be pretty cool, but I th- if they really want to sell F Zero, they need to like heavily focus on customization and online. So like imagine being able to take uh, an F Zero cart, um, you can actually you can color the whole thing, you can make it look really cool. You can have customized tires, customized glass, uh, things along the lines of that. And there needs to be very, very strong uh, online. Like you need to be able to set up your own lobbies, private battles. There should be specific events for certain courses. Uh, things along the lines of that I think would be really important for a new F-Zero game, as well as it being open world. You just repeated really strong online. And I just want to know what is Nintendo thinking with online right now? uh we don't i don't think we know enough yet i know everyone right now is freaking out about the online because it looks like ass right now but hopefully they're gonna do a bit more than what they've told us nathaniel i'm looking to you for answers i don't i don't have the answers (laughs) i'm not reggie i don't have the answers reggie doesn't have the answers either let's be honest he no he doesn't the executives (sighs) have the answers and that's about it the investors have the answers for those who don't know, you know, like what we know about the online so far is, is that we're we're looking at a free trial for everybody for the first several months that Nintendo is going to have online with the Switch. And then they're going to switch to a paid service again, also for everybody. It's not like you're going to be able to continue some kind of a free trial, apparently. And then on top of that, you have voice chat requiring a smartphone app. Which you know, I was just I was thinking about the online it's kind of interesting that they're starting with a free trial and then you'll have to pay for it. Like, think about everyone that's going to be playing online games, you know, throughout the spring and summer, then all of a sudden they have to pay for it. Like, are they going to lose a lot of customers? Are people going to give in and pay? Like, what do you think about that? I have no idea. Like, like there's that's so... something that's never really happened before on a console. Yeah. It's always, you don't pay for it or you do pay for it. Yeah, I don't know if they're wanting to like rope everyone in with video game crack and then like say like, oh, now we're up in the price. But like, yeah, I I have no clue. And and I don't know what it is that they're like, I don't know what they're expecting people to do. And and, and they've they've supposedly said that it's going to be affordable, whatever that means. But like affordable should be like free. I mean, oh, OK, like. For, for dedicated servers, I can understand like charging a small amount for dedicated servers. But that's uh, the thing. If it's going to be free, are they going to have dedicated servers from the beginning? Or are they going to add them later? Like that doesn't make sense to me at all. That makes it sound th- like there's not going to be servers or there are going to be servers and they're just going to be paying for it themselves at first. Yeah. No, I I think that there are going to be dedicated servers from the start because they've talked about on Wii U, how, like, for Mario Kart and Splatoon and stuff, they do have servers for those, I, I think, and, uh, like, Reggie's been quoted as saying, those are not a small expense. In other words, like, that's why we're going to have to charge it, charge you for it in the future. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes me feel a bit better, then. That, that's a good point, actually. I think you're right. I think with online, it's just going to be really important that they get that right. Everything is so ridiculously important for them in this console. And with what we were talking about earlier with like the the idea that maybe these console numbers are are plunging across the board, I'm just really interested to see what's going to happen. I'm like I have like this this paranoia or like this uh I don't I'm I'm, I'm like I'm anxious. And I'm 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 not just anxious about the launch. I'm anxious about like what is all of 2017 going to look like. Yeah, it's so hard to predict what's going to happen because I mean everyone thought the Wii was going to flop. That thing ended up selling 100 million units, and then the Wii U came out. The thing sold 13 million units. So like it's impossible to predict what's going to happen with Nintendo. All right, we're going to go to questions, and uh, yep. of course we got to get that ad rev. <laughs> All right, 
so Scott, what is the most disgusting food that's eaten by people regularly? Um, this is by Aaron. I think Raffle Master. Mm, 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 mm. The most disgusting food that's eaten by people regularly? Probably Papa John's pizza. I mean, okay. <laughs> is that your is that your final answer? <laughs> um. Actually, oh, oh, yes and no. I mean, yes, Papa John's <laughs> is absolutely disgusting. But but also, secondly, um, oysters. I hate oysters. Well, no, people don't regularly eat oysters, though, do they? I guess not. I'm, I, I'm trying I to think. I don't think so. Uh, well, I know, I know what the, you know what, you know what my answer is? What? It's going to have to be Domino's pizza. <laughs> it's just so nasty, dude. Ugh. How can people eat that? I'm I'm really curious to know Jacob's answer to this. It's really sad that he's not with <laughs> us this time. <clears throat> He'd probably say nothing. He said he likes everything. That's true. I mean, he did eat that like five day old, five day old burrito from <laughs> McDonald's, and then <laughs> just threw up everywhere. <laughs> yep. Which really, yep. I mean, it's it sounds like him. I I believe that story. I I would really like to give a better answer to this. I I might I might have to come back to that. I don't know. Um, okay. Do you think that female Link was scrapped from Breath of the Wild because Link is sometimes shirtless and running around in a bra would be a bit too much for Nintendo? I did not know she was scrapped from Breath of the Wild, but now that I do, I highly doubt it has anything to do with that. I really don't know what it could be. It's probably something really stupid. <sighs> I'm not entirely certain that a female Link would have been scrapped from Breath of the Wild. I, I maybe they were just trying to case. maybe they were trying to stay more traditional i guess i don't really know i mean yeah i don't know uh, we do know that the male link does not have nipples and that's really important so mm -hmm. i mean maybe, link, basi maybe, link basically is a guy and a girl so kind of i mean <laughs> he's he is a little bit feminine right like yeah yeah he's he's got like i don't know I mean, maybe maybe them just wiping the nipples was their way of like kind of having a halfway point. You know what I mean? Maybe he just doesn't have a gender. He's a gender. He's he's genderless. He's genderless. From, yeah. From now on, we must refer to Link as uh, they and um, I guess that's and it. Them. Right? They and them, and that's it. Yeah. Yep. So we just gotta say like uh, their sword. Link must get. <laughs> Their sword, I that guess. Sword. The I don't yeah. Know. We'd have to ask him what his pronouns are. Uh, or we'd have to ask that. We'd have to ask <laughs> Link what the. I, I can't do this. Oh my god. <laughs> I yeah, but in all seriousness, I don't think Nintendo has any issue with a female Link. Uh, I think no. that if they wanted to do that, they would have done that. I think that. Like, I mean, Zelda is a really huge game series, and to switch up the, the formula is kind of a big deal. So uh, I think that, like, in many, many ways, this will follow many Legend of Zelda traditions, and that's why we do not see a female Link. Although, you know, I, would, I remember reading, that there. I think there was some follow-up comments from... Um, Aonuma uh about this uh i might have to look them up after the show but i think he he did a follow-up and kind of said that because a lot of people were asking about that that it, it may be something in the future but that when he was listening to fan feedback about this it was like they they kind of don't pay it a lot of attention to stuff that goes around on the, on the net and a female link is something that was just going around a whole lot before the game was revealed or, or details were revealed about it. And um, and that they can't really listen to that stuff as they build it, because if they did and they kind of took all of it into account, they don't know if they would they, they may not end up with the same game or even a good game. So uh, you know, but, quite but frankly, think, quite frankly, it all sounds PC to me. <laughs> like, who cares what the gender just is? Just for the sake. I mean, yeah. Just for like, the sake I th of honestly. Correctness. Yeah, like, yeah, like if that, I mean, maybe that was originally their intention and, and then they were thinking, you know, 
why are we doing this? This is just going to be confusing because Link is male. That's just his character. That's how he has always been. So it's really hard to answer something like that. Why does the game developer guy sound like that? that I think that's you. Why do you sound that, like that Derek me. Bittner from Game Explain? I don't sound like Derek Bittner. I I saw I this question earlier either. today. I looked up I looked up Game Explain, which is a is a perfectly fine channel, by the way. They do really impressive things. They make like hour long videos out of like ten seconds of gameplay footage. But um, I I I looked up this dude Derek Bittner because I was curious, and I mm. I heard his voice. I sound nothing like that guy. Nothing like that. Dude no, not whatsoever. even a little bit. Yeah. No. And I'm trying to think. Maybe he was mistaking you with Ash or Andre, but like none of those guys. I mean, maybe you kind of sound like Derek, but not really, though. Like, all of them have very distinct voices, and none, none of them really compare to yours. None of them compare to my voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, if you were locked in a room and forced to play one game for the rest of your life, what game would it be? This is by Dean. Thanks, Dean. If I was locked in a room and forced to play one game, what would I'm sure yep. your answer to this would just be Mario 64. Uh, probably not actually. Really? I no. Like it would be I Last think... Impact. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it'd be that either. I don't know. I'd probably play something. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I would want to play Mario 64. Honestly, it might be. A Mario Kart game or Splatoon, as long as I can play online, because that way I have different experiences. Because I don't want to yeah. get too bored. Like with Mario sixty four, it's like it's the same thing every time. Like right. nothing really changes aside from a little RNG from the enemies here and there, but otherwise everything is basically the same. That's true, and, and 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 if you were locked in your room the whole time. Hopefully you don't have to at some point come out to like work and make money because then you won't be able to afford to play online, right? Exactly. Because you're gonna have yeah. to you're gonna have to pay for that on the Switch. Anyways, uh <laughs> no, for me I think it would uh it would probably be uh Age of Empires two, I wanna say. Um like all the questions we receive on the show, my answer could definitely change like next week or something, but Age of Empires 2 is already like a really long running game time. Like when you when you play skirmish games in AoE, you'll play for like three or four hours in some cases. Uh, it's kind of like Monopoly in that way. But like <laughs> when you play those long play sessions, time flies by. You look up and you don't even you don't even know what happened. Um, and I used to do that all the time anyway, which is why I figured that since Nathaniel will do crazy like four hour streams of mario rom hacks i figured that would be his answer but i guess not yeah i i like i really like playing mario rom hacks but i do get tired of them every once in a while like uh i, I have to take breaks sometimes uh, maybe my answer is tetris i could play that game for probably forever not in like very like I'd, i only want to play every once in a while i don't think i could play it every day Tetris is great. Next question is one two switch is fifty dollars. Is that too much? The answer is yes. Yes. Next question. Next question. Um, <laughs> let's let's skip this one about Rogue One since Jacob is in here. Yeah, we um, will talk about Rogue One at some other time. Yeah. So let's see. Your feelings regarding Nintendo only renting you SNES slash NES games as part of their online service, and also no achievement slash trophy system. These days where free games with online service and a profile tied progress system are an industry standard, isn't it disheartening to see Nintendo being behind? Mm. I, I don't have any issue with a lack of achievement systems. I, did you know that for developers who develop on Xbox, I'm not sure if this is still true. I, I want to say it still is, and it's probably it, it might be the case for Steam too, but like it's been a requirement with a couple different things for developers to like shoehorn in achievements. And I've always thought that that's really dumb and it doesn't, it doesn't work for everything. Um, and I've never really been like huge on achievements anyway. So that, that doesn't yeah, bother for me. me personally. I haven't cared about achievements and honestly, even like the free games I've, you know, knowing again, this is completely my opinion it, for a lot of people. It'll probably be different, but for me personally, even if Nintendo were to give me free games, I don't think I'd have the time to play them. Like, like seriously, I only have time to play what I'm working on, usually. And if I want to play something 
uh, more casually, then I pick myself. I'm not just going to... I mean, it's it'd be nice to get free games, but for me personally, I don't think I would play them. Yeah, I mean, I already don't have time enough as it is, which is why, like, it, it feels like when they're throwing in the, the the ability to rent one NES or SNES game, it feels like they're just throwing something in to be like, yeah, you have to pay us for online, but here's a little something, and it's like, yeah, but I didn't ask for that. And I don't, what, what, what if I don't care about the, the SNES or the NES? You know, mm-hmm. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, you know, it would almost, I think if, what Nintendo should consider doing is if we can pick the game that we want to rent and it's not just something random, I think that would be a lot more incentivizing for people to pay for the service. Yeah. Why don't they just why don't they just do a full on streaming service? I- NVIDIA yeah. already N- basically did that with the shield. Uh, it's really easy for the switch to run those old games like why don't they just do full on streaming via the virtual console where, okay, you charge for online. Fine. Go ahead and charge for online. And then for that, do give me the, the Netflix of Nintendo games and let mm-hmm. me play like anything from your super old library. If it's on the, the, the NES, the SNES, the N64, just like open it up, open up the library and let me just like download whatever or, or play whatever and um, and then that will do a number of things like all in like a, a single swoop. I think it would eliminate like the controversy around emulators on the Internet, which at least somewhat because then it would just be like, well, you know, yeah, people pirate movies, they pirate TV shows. But like when you're only paying eight bucks a month for Netflix, why does it matter? It'd be the same thing for Nintendo online service. Yeah. So I think everyone has been saying that for the yeah. past few years now, like everyone wants them to do that. And it yeah. su- seems like such an easy revenue source for them, but they're just, from what we know, they're not doing that. They're not going to do that with the Switch, which no. is just crazy no. to me. It's crazy for all no. of us. And that's, like, the, the that entire old catalog is their, like, one of their strongest assets. And, and they that, that's one of the big things that especially before now, like, if they would have done that, like, four or five years ago, and just immediately started with that. They could have just crushed it, I think. Yeah. You know, even if they on- were only offering like 100 games, like if they offered like 5 or 10 from NES, 5 or 10 for SNES, you know, Game Boy stuff, DS, on and yeah. on and on. But if they swapped those out every two to three months, that would be amazing. Like even if you can't own the games for forever, at least you're paying like $10 a month for the service and you can try... A, a big variety of classic games and like there's no reason that they can't be doing this i mean i just i don't understand there is no excuse and did you see that thing uh r- earlier this week i think it was on twitter but <clears throat> somebody had found a, a like in a digital signature for super mario brothers that there is a very very strong possibility they literally downloaded the super mario brothers rom from the internet that someone else had put together Oh my and then God. they threw that onto the eShop, and that's what you download when you buy that game on the Virtual Console. That is freaking hilarious. If that's actually true, oh I my think it God. Is. <laughs> yes. For for those who are interested, please fuck? Google it after you listen to the show. I'm pretty what? sure that Nintendo literally pirated their own game and sold it back to you. Wow. Yeah. That is unbelievable. You know, if they'll do that, then why not just do it for all of their damn games? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, and do it That's for crazy. like a reasonable price where like you yeah, I mean, if if especially like again, like especially 4 or 5 years ago, if they would have come out with a streaming service back then, it would have been a system seller. It could mm-hmm. have moved consoles for them. To actually it do would that. have moved Wii U sales. Oh yeah. It yeah, it would have. It would have been a, a very strong uh force for them in sales, but anyway. All right. So uh next question. Do you think they will make a new Smash Bros game or will they just port Smash 4 and add some character slash stages? I think they'll port it, but I really hope they don't. Uh I'm with you. I hope they don't just port Smash 4, but seeing how much time and money they've already poured into that game, I'm sure they're just going to port it and then we'll either get a new Smash Bros much later on or for the next Nintendo console. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think we need a new Smash, to be honest. 
Yeah, you know, I'm I'm very happy with Smash Four because it feels like like we just finished getting all that DLC. I mean, I know it's been yeah. about a year or so since Bayonetta came out, but it feels like it was just yesterday. So there's no right. reason for them to not just port Smash Four for now, and then they can work on the next Smash game. Yeah, and there's also no reason that they can't continue coming out with DLC for that same game. But I mean, like, mm-hmm. you know, Smash Brothers, and uh, it, there, there's a lot of other games where, where this is the case. Now that you have, like, the full template for the game, and the formula is not really going to change, I mean, not not at all, and, and I, I don't think people would would even want it to, you really don't need to do a whole lot as far as coming out with a direct sequel to that. Um I mean, I think that's definitely true for Smash. Uh, they could bring back single player. That would be nice. An actual adventure mode. Right. I mean, like, wh- yeah. So, like, why not do, like, we're getting Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Why not do Smash Deluxe or something? You know, like, it would make sense. Yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. But, you know, we're probably only going to get a few new characters, a few new stages. I doubt we'll get, like, a whole new like subspace emissary 2 or a real target test or brand new modes it'll probably just be new characters new stages yeah uh and i mean yeah graphics update never hurts but oh yeah yeah i'm sure and for i mean for whoever submitted this question i don't i don't know what you're thinking like needs to be in a new smash game but you know like from my perspective and i'm i'm not like a smash fan or anything i i don't know how much nathaniel's into smash but i don't think that smash brothers has really evolved all that much over its lifespan and and across all of its games so i i don't think that we need to do anything with smash other than like just occasionally revise it and and re-deliver it with with you know a fresher look basically but i think that the gameplay there's nothing broken about it and there's there's not a whole lot you need to do other than yeah like as you mentioned maybe bring back single player I think the thing with Smash 4 and even making a new game that's so difficult is that Smash 4 right now is absolutely huge. It has, I think, 59 characters, which is insane. It has like 40 to 60 stages. I don't know the exact amount, but if they make a new Smash game, they have to up that to make it feel like more. So that would mean they would have to put together 70, 80 characters for the next Smash game and upwards of 80 90 stages which sounds like an absolutely insane amount of work and that doesn't even include all the additional game modes that they would have to add like smash 4 is already so huge that i think it's going to be quite a while before we get a brand new one i think we have time for one more uh christian corona asked thoughts on emulators i as someone who was born in the 2000s was not able to play these classics until virtual consoles started happening but even then there are some games that haven't been on that service and when they're on the service uh it or yeah and when they're on service is even shitty at emulating so is it okay to use them um i do buy the actual games so i think emulators are a very gray area um there are times where i think it's okay to emulate certain games and there are times when you shouldn't be like as an example uh, I think it's perfectly okay to emulate a certain game if one it's very very rare and possible to find a physical copy or two you already purchased a physical copy but if you're doing something like emulating games that just came out three months ago or games that haven't even come out yet if you're finding ways to pirate those then that's not okay so it's a very gray area I don't even know how I feel about it honestly like I definitely think it's the case that if you purchased a physical copy um, and, and emulators have been an issue for such a long time, like it, emulators have been an issue since the 1990s, uh, mm-hmm. like basically as long as we've had emulation, it's been like a question and a debate. Um, but yeah, I think like definitely if you have a physical copy for the virtual console, uh we all know Nintendo doesn't want you using ROMs. <laughs> oh, in no, fact, comp- no company wants you to do that. They are like blaringly vocal about like how they think emulators are despicable, which is just silly. But like, yeah, I, yeah, I think if you've purchased it, whether physical or or as another download, then in my mind, there's not really anything wrong with using an emulator. And but, I think um, emulators are also important for preserving games because there are some games that have been yeah 
digital only, and they were taken off the store and never, like, they were never ever able to be accessed again. So yeah. emulation helps preserve games, which is a really important thing. Absolutely. And the whole theory behind what we just mentioned like a short while ago about Nintendo downloading the Super Mario Brothers ROM, the the uh, the the theory behind that is that maybe they had to do that because bizarrely, Nintendo may have not preserved Super Mario Brothers well enough that they could have just easily transferred from from uh, you know some old files that they had or or maybe the format was too difficult to contend with or something like that. But that kind of says something interesting, which is that if Nintendo had to, um, quote unquote, pirate their own game and sell it back to you, that basically says that the Internet and that like the community at large did a better job at preserving that in a, in a more accessible format than Nintendo themselves did. And Super Mario mm -hmm. Brothers is a classic it is like the the like the it's defining the game video game of video are. games <laughs> yeah like so that's i guess just another thing to touch on um one thing that's really cool about emulators especially something like the dolphin emulator is that they can make games look a lot better like go back to dolphin they can make gamecube games and wii games and output them in 4k which is yeah. incredible. That's something right. that you can't do on a normal console. Yeah, and so as a result, you have gaming communities or like, you know, with these ROM hacks and stuff where you have people go back and they, they, they revisit that content and they uh, are able to update it and give it, give it that modern freshness in a way that Nintendo doesn't even have the time or the money to do. Yep, exactly. So, yeah, um... I'm really interested to see, I mean, yeah, we, we could talk about emulators a long time. I'm really interested to see what, what what's going to happen with like the, the legal issues around emulators, because at some point there will be some kind of a showdown, some kind of a confrontation um, in the courts about emulators. I'm just not sure when it's going to happen. I'm honestly sort of surprised that there has not been some sort of landmark case that hasn't already happened uh, so far because this has been going on for such a long time um, but at some point it will happen and when it does uh, that's going to be scary because I think overall emulators are a positive thing and like modders who are modding like these old classic games and stuff like that I think that they're generally speaking they're doing a really good thing mm -hmm. yeah they're keeping games alive longer I mean nowadays you see some companies actually encourage people to mod their own games like uh with xbox one i believe you can actually put mods of gta 5 on an xbox one which is just really really cool so i don't think modding might not necessarily go away because that's not technically emulating a game but at the same time you do still need to to get data from the game to be able to mod it yeah, this Microsoft. Is we could make is, a whole podcast about emulation. We really could. Yeah, Microsoft is going to be totally on board with with mods as time goes on, because mm -hmm. of how they're wanting to make Windows like the universal operating system across all devices, and that will include Xbox. And so, if you can mod on Windows, you'll be able to mod on Xbox and everywhere else. Um, and so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We could we could talk about this at great length, but very very good question. Um, we are out of time for the week, though, so with that, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Nathaniel Bandy, where can they find you? Uh, look me up, Nathaniel Bandy. I make Nintendo content, and yeah, yeah. His channel is fantastic. Definitely go look him up and subscribe. Uh, you can find me here on Digicades, of course, and uh, unfortunately, Jacob is not with us, but he will be back with us next week, I hope. He's working on some new content here for the channel, uh, which is probably going to be pretty slick if he's having to take all this time out to produce it. Mm -hmm. And you can find me at elegacorp.com as well, um, and on Twitter at elegacorp, that's E-L-E-G-A, corp. Uh, I am an indie developer, I am working on a real-time strategy game, but for the most part, you're probably here to listen to us discuss video games on the podcast. We have 20 seconds left. Nathaniel, is there anything else you want to say to the audience?
Um, uh, uh, I don't know. He put me on the spot. Do you have anything to say? I have nothing to say at all other than with this ending card, you should definitely click yes. the boxes. Yes, click click the left one. That one is my favorite. I love that one.